hey, it's time to make an update on the 5M Pro from Flashforge that I reviewed just as it was released. Let's see if there's any improvements. I'm pretty sure they are. If you haven't seen the review, you can do that in the link down below and you should probably see that before. I pointed out a few drawbacks with the leveling and the Wi-Fi transfer, but most of that seems to have been fixed. But first we have to do the over-the-air updates, which is super easy. You just click update and then you're done. Then we have to do the full calibration as well, because some of these settings might be outdated when they do the update in the firmware. Again, this is the like full calibration of sensors, of um, vibration and leveling and all that. It's, it's automated and very fast. And I can confirm that the automatic leveling from Wi-Fi is completely solved. Everything works perfectly. I printed this part, for example, with perfect adhesion. Just sent it for your Wi-Fi, didn't have to care anything about the machine. As it should be from the beginning, but there was some bug that you had to kind of transfer the file and then do a manual leveling. Uh, otherwise, it might not stick when doing the Wi-Fi. That is solved. And to be fair, Flashforge sent me some materials. That's why this video is flagged as sponsored because they sent some materials that they probably want me to use. So to be more fair for the 5M Pro, we're gonna use the slicer presets for these kind of materials, which means that we can better compare it to the competition like Reality and Bamboo Labs. I mean, we already know this is a great printer for generic materials. I'm expecting it to be even better with the manufacturer's presets. Have you ever seen a dual color material before? It looks awesome. <laughs> As you can see, this is a really cool material. Everything looks really good except for the seam. So there's still some improvements to be able to be done on the seam. Uh, I think seams are extra visible on silk materials, of course, because they're very shiny, as you can see. Uh, by the way, check out the design of this model down below. I'll be using it more in this video. All right, next up, we're gonna use the high-speed PLA. Uh, it's loaded right now. So I did a synthetic test, but I mean, that's really boring. It printed well, uh, but that's not a real case scenario. So I wanted to push this onker as well. And this is made with the fastest possible settings that I could make. I even tried to increase the volumetric flow to 32 millimeters per second. I also tried to find more settings to increase, but flash print won't allow me. So this is the fastest possible print you can do with the um, standard settings. I did not change layer heights or number of infill or number of uh, shells and layers, top layers, bottom layers, nothing like that. Only acceleration and speed settings to the maximum. And the quality is really nice. I tried to get it under two hours, but I didn't manage. You can see some cooling issues uh, under the chin, but that's on one of the sides. Other than that, that's really impressive. This is 150 millimeter high, so if you want to try this at your printer, Run it as fast as you can with default 0.2 millimeter layers and uh, yeah, let's see if you can come under two hours. But yeah, looking at this printing, it's not doing 300 millimeter per second extrusion all the time. It's mostly around 200 millimeter, 250 and sometimes up to 300. Then of course we have travel at 600 millimeters per second. So it's, it's super fast, but it's not always 300 millimeters per second. So except for printing dual color pigs, <laughs> what's the point of this video? Well, I really want to make sure people understand how good this printer is. Not only is this a really superb printer, sure it can't compete on the size, but it's actually faster in its default presets than many of the other machines that are, it's competing with right now. It has a great touchscreen, it has great Wi-Fi, it's enclosed, it has more filtrations than the P1S for example. It has a lot of features going for it, with the camera, remote monitoring and, and a really fast camera for that matter. But I actually don't want to recommend the 5M Pro. I want to talk more about the 5M Lite or the regular 5M. It's the same printer, but it doesn't have the enclosure. It doesn't have the camera. But other than that, it's the same printer. So if you're printing PLA or you're printing PHG, or some other materials that don't need the enclosure and you don't need the like dual or quadruple color that you can get with competition. The 5M is like $349. Do you realize how cheap that is for a clipper, a Core XY machine that's not a belt slinger, that has amazing camera Wi-Fi? By the way, you can update that cam camera for 25 bucks, you get the camera for the 5M. So I think that's a steal. If you're running some sort of production facility with PLA, you don't need multicolor, you need something reliable, easy to swap the extruders. I mean, the nozzle swap is crazy good. It's so fast, all you do, you pull it out, you swap nozzle size, and then you're ready to go again. So if you're doing some, some type of production, I think you should consider doing the 5M 
with a camera upgrade. Uh, that should land you at like 370. Check out the links down below, affiliate links by the way, um, to make sure you get the right price. Maybe there's some deals, maybe have some coupons down there. I mean, that's a really good price compared to the P1P, for example, which is fine like that, I think. It's almost double the price. And if you look at the creality options, sure, they are sometimes up and down in price, but the reliability and quality has been a little bit upside and down as well. Sure, if you need a bigger size, then you, you have to choose something else. But as a production machine, if you run more than one, if you're still making money on printing parts, I think the 5M Lite or the regular 5M is a great machine for now. I mean, this one is as well with the filtration and the, the enclosure, it's still not an expensive printer. And I think it's a really good choice as long as you don't need the multicolor. That's the update for the 5M Pro. This has gone from a great printer with some flaws to a fantastic printer that's competing on the high level side with speed, reliability, quality, and yeah. Personally, I run this machine, I run the P1S that is behind you, I run the A1 Mini, I also have a A1. I don't have a Creality machine just yet, I want to get one so I can compare these three together. But yeah, I just want to say that I'm running this parallel to the competition. It should say something about how well it's performing. So again, check out the 5M without the enclosure. That's a steal. <laughs> That's a really good price. Thank you so much for watching, see you guys in the next video. Bye!